great speed to there. I've got a total of 30 seconds overall here, but obviously these numbers overlap. But if we compare these with the numbers above them, that is what I find interesting. <laughs> Welcome back and today I'm going to continue my look at SSD versus hard drives versus caching with the QNAP NAS. Now I'm using this TS977 and in my previous test I was showing you guys <coughs> a real world scenario where you were sending a bunch of files from a laptop via 10 GBE onto a NAS and showing that good RAID can be just as good as a big pile of hard drives. But today I'm going to be focusing primarily inside this QNAP NAS. We've still got are near 50 gig of files, I think 49.2 files on our RAID 0 uh, SSDs. We have got them on our RAID 5 hard drives and our single WD4TB from the previous video. I heartily recommend you check out that previous video. Now, what we're doing today is I'm going to be making clones and copies of those files inside the system as if to make multiple backups of those files and more. And the CPU inside this, the Ryzen 5, will be fine with it. But what will those individual medias do? And we want to see firstly, obviously, which is faster, which is going to be the SSDs, but by how much? But two, if we enable SSD caching to support the RAID 5, so all three of those 14 TB drives, or we add one SSD for caching, what happens and how much of a benefit is caching. So without further ado, we're gonna make our way onto the NAS. Okay, so we're back on our desktop environment here and we're on the QNAP NAS here, once again, the TS977XU. And we've got those files, let's double check and show you. We have got the 49.32 gigabytes of files on the RAID 0 volume of SSDs. If we head over to the four terabyte single hard drive without RAID, we will find, once again, 49.32 gigabytes. And finally, if we make our way to the RAID volume, we can see, again, from the previous tests, 49.32 gigabytes. So, once again, we have got this near 50 gig of files on three different kinds of storage. Again, if you don't have them followed so far, I heartily recommend you check out the previous video to understand what we're doing here. So, first things first, we're gonna head to the 4TB um, a single hard drive so no raid and the, all, the, all these operations are happening within the NAS and we're going to create three dummy folders we're just going to call it one two three two and three and in each of these folders we're going to simultaneously copy all 50 gig of files at the same time into three different directories. We're effectively gonna make the CPU copy the same files three times within the same media. So not moving from one to the others, but always within the same media. So we'll go ahead and we're going to copy to one first. So once again, within that hard drive, we're gonna to copy to one and I'm gonna start the clock as soon as I click one. So we're gonna start this now. We're gonna do the same copy again, but this time we're gonna copy into two and the clock is already running. Copy within two. And finally, exactly the same copying, but of course copying into three. I will fast forward the clock in a bit, so don't worry, you haven't got to hang around for this. And we'll leave that there for when we're doing the fast forwarding. And there we go, we'll see the progress of our transfer there. And what I'm gonna do is fast forward a little bit. Let's move that amount there. And we'll come back to when this is complete. I'll even try to bring in the system performance at exactly the same time. But otherwise, let's fast forward to see how long this takes to do a transfer onto the hard drive. Okay, so we're getting close to completion here. And if we click complete, they're all done. And that took one minute, 49 seconds. So again, not too bad. So we're gonna do exactly the same test now, but this time, we, and if you can double check, inside every folder is those test files. They're all there from before. And this time, we're gonna make our way back and do exactly the same test, this time on a RAID 5. So again, exactly the same test. I'm gonna reset the clock here on the side. And, we're going to create those same three folders as before. 
So we'll create a new folder there, get rid of that. And we'll call it again, folder one. Folder two. And of course, folder three. So once again, as soon as the first transfer begins, then I shall start the clock. So again, we're working with the RAID 5 array. We're gonna go into folder one. Three, two, one, go. And again, we'll do the rest of the transfers. And again, you can probably hear the hard drive clicking in the background during this test. And that's because these are 7200 enterprise level hard drives which are a pinch noisier than traditional hard drives then we'll open up that we'll go to the bottom and we'll let this transfer begin and once again we'll let the system performance there in the background but one test is already completed or one of the transfers is already complete we're just waiting for the other two now and again, the time to beat before was already displayed on screen. The second one is nearly completed as well. I think we've almost done it. We're just gonna wait for that to say completed and we're done. And that took 56 seconds to make those three copies compared with a single hard drive. And that is because of the benefits of a RAID 5 configuration. So once again, now we'll move on to easily the fastest media of these three and this one we are going to we're doing the reset of the test there and this bad boy once again just to double check there you go 49.32 gigabytes and i'll be surprised if we can even catch this thing in the processing but once again we'll do our folders there you go where's create folder i went blind there for a second <laughs> so one create folder do and create folder three so we'll get ready for the final part of the test move into the ssd ray zero territory get ready three two one go we'll do it again copy two Raid zero wrong one Raid zero go into folder two Again, move copy RAID 0. And all three of our tests are being conducted. And again, it's almost impossible to track this because it's already done. That took 32 seconds. And again, that is because we're using SSDs in that RAID 0 environment. We fully expected the SSDs to be the fastest. However, what's interesting now is what we want to do is convert some of these SSDs or indeed one or two of them into an area of cache to support those hard drives. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the recording here and I'm going to transfer over to the SSD cache setup on this device. It can take me about 20 minutes, but I'll get that set up now. Okay, so we've removed the SSDs as a RAID and now we're going to use those same SSDs for caching. So. What we're gonna do is make our way into the storage manager. And from here, we're going to create that cache acceleration area. So we've got the plus symbol here, we click there, and it will give us some information about cache and read write cache and different kinds of cache. What we're gonna do is two different kinds for this video. I'm gonna do a standard read only cache to begin with, and then I'm gonna do some other ones later on. There's our four SSDs <coughs> that we've um, opened up. So for now, we're just gonna create one area of cache just to show you read-only cache. So again, there'll be no RAID configuration because it's only the one drive. We click next. We can create over provisioning tools and there's another whole video in that, but we'll leave that be. And we'll leave these all to default for now. We'll click next and it will be used to support which volume we want it to support. So we're gonna disable that. We're gonna use this area of cache to support that RAID 5 from earlier. We're gonna go ahead, it's gonna create that new area of SSD cache to support that RAID 5 configuration. And it's just letting us know that data on those cache, remember, is 
cloned data, not original data. So for now, it's going to start creating our area of cache acceleration. It's just going to start setting that up now. It's initializing, and if it doesn't take too long, I'll carry on from here. Here we go. Our area of cache acceleration is now created. So again, we're going to perform exactly the same tests that we did before with the RAID 5 array. But this time, if we delete all three of these, delete them completely so we can restart. Delete. Delete permanently. And then what we're going to do is do exactly the same test that we just did, but this time with cache supporting this RAID 5 array. So once again, let's get our random folders created. And again, I'm well aware that this is kind of a microcosm experiment. I could have gone for much larger capacities of terabytes and more, but it would have been a much, much longer video. And I think a lot of the logic and the principle can still be displayed <coughs> in this micro fashion. So I'll get the timer ready. And again, just to confirm, there's the SSD caching and where it's supporting. It's supporting the cache storage of the data volume, that 24 terabytes, and that's three 14 TB drives in a RAID 5. But let's get this party started. So copy two, and we'll get ready with the timer. Get that into number one. Three, two, one. Carry on there, copy two. Big five array. One more time for luck. And again, for those that are wondering, the reason we're doing separate volumes is just to show multiple copies all happening at once. So again, it's happening now. We're up to about 20 odd seconds on the clock. Uh, it looks like the first transfer is practically complete. And what's interesting is what the cache is going to do is it can see the frequently accessed files. So, in theory, it should start moving files over from the cached portion onto there to do this noticeably quicker. At the moment, we're up to 40 odd seconds. And we're counting down. Nearly there. And complete. So that was 59 seconds there. So not a huge, impressive leap on what we had before, but that's because of the user case scenario we are running with because we were doing writing over reading. Now we can do exactly the same test, but this time with read and write cache. And here is the RAID 5 volume supported with two SSDs in a RAID 1 with read write caching. So what we'll do is we'll do exactly the same test as before. And again, we'll knock this out lovely and quick because again, I am looking forward to seeing these results. I'll reset the clock there in the background. And as before, these nice empty folders. I've emptied these folders out between takes, don't worry. Three, two, one, go. Move along forward from there. Copy, copy two. Go to folder number two. Don't know about you guys, but I've got a fantastically sore throat today. And now we can see that performance. Go right down to the bottom. First one's already done and it took a whole 11 seconds. Moving forward, we can go to the sex one, that's done. And finally, the third one, and done. So again, great speed to there. I've got a total of 30 seconds overall here, but obviously these numbers overlap. But if we compare these with the numbers above them, that is what I find interesting, because the other another test was using RAID 10, but it's still great to see the difference there between the RAID 5 array without caching, that's those numbers there, and these lower numbers where we're utilizing RAID cache. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I really did enjoy going through these RAID tests, and I hope you did too. And this just tells you about the benefit of those out there that have got a RAID system, particularly RAID 5 or RAID 6, that may have an empty bay or SSD bays built into their system. This shows you the real world benefits of SSD caching in your system. And I do recommend read write caching. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.